Contemporary art of Latin America is an expression of not only the artists, but the dynamic of their time period. These artists were influenced by oppressive governments, new social changes, and personal conflicts. Many of these artists have either studied together or were producing masterpieces around the same time. For example, Deborah Arango and Maria Izquierdo both attended the same art school in Mexico City. A notable commonality between all of these artists is that they are women and excelled in an industry that was very male-dominated. Many of these artists were surrealists and used specific techniques to portray emotions, metaphors, and important symbols. A native of metal in Colombia, Deborah Arango produced a countless number of works over her prolific career. She is known as a trailblazer and as a Colombian artist that focuses intently on society and politics within her country. When she first hit the scene, many of her works were seen as controversial. She openly criticized the dictatorship of Gustavo Rojas Pineda with raw, emotionally charged paintings at a time when the country was seen as socially conservative. In fact, the New York Times quotes an expert as saying that Arango was not preoccupied with aesthetics. What was central was expressing herself. One of the things that can be said is that she was deeply influenced by the muralist movement in Mexico that displayed the country's checkered and epic history. In addition to her criticisms of political leaders, some of her topics covered were race, poverty, and the political violence that pervaded the country. Arango was and is unquestionably known as more of a modern artist as she produced at her height between the 1940s and the 1950s. Completing works more recently, Olivia Piguero is a Dominican artist who predominantly paints realistic tropical and island landscapes. Also included in her works are a number of still life paintings. Among additional common themes depicted in her work are life and birth and existence and death. Upon seeing her works, for instance, one of her flower paintings, the viewer is blown away by the sharpness of the image, along with the attention for even the slightest gradations in color and shadow. It is almost as if someone depicted an enhancement on reality. Figueroa's paintings are a strong representation of an artist displaying national pride through subject matter, as her paintings exclusively consist of renderings of nature in the Dominican Republic only shown at its best. Figueroa is also actively involved in charity, with their own foundation to extend our education to young children in rural areas in the Dominican Republic. One of the most prominent Ecuadorian contemporary artists is Oswaldo Guayasamin. Guayasamin is a master painter and sculptor of Quechua and Mestizo heritage. He held his first exhibition at the age of 23. His work, however, is not decorative. Far from that, it represents his efforts to denounce injustices, human rights abuses, and torture in the dictatorships. Coming from a poor background, Guayasamin reflected his angst, his necessities, and the injustice he lived throughout his childhood in his artwork. He also lived through the violence of the 20th century, and his paintings reflect his opinion of that. In fact, through his art, he took a stand against militarization and excessive spending on weapons. He believed in the urgent need to stop fighting against each other and come together to create a better world. Perhaps his greatest gift to his country is the Chapel of Men. The Chapel of Men is an example of architecture with identity. It was designed with a fundamental reference to the architecture of the original people of the American continent. He intended it as a place where his compatriots could go to analyze their roots, question the events of the conquest, and think of the way they were going into the 21st century. Another brilliant contemporary Latin American artist is Fernando Botero. Botero is a Colombian figurative artist and sculptor. He is the father of the artistic style known as Boterismo, that depicts people and animals in exaggerated volume. Sometimes for the sake of political criticism, and sometimes simply for humor. Much of his work focused on politics, and some of it on the Colombian drug war. His art can be found in highly frequented places around the world, such as Park Avenue in New York or the Champs Elysees in Paris. He began painting at an early age and was highly influenced by Italian Renaissance painter Piero della Francesca. His visit to Mexico in the 1950s also helped him find his own style and shifted his interest towards the explosion of colors in painting. The high sense of patriotism that he discovered in the Mexican people, and especially in the Mexican artists, inspired him to paint about his homeland. Since then, Latin America has been the most important subject throughout his entire career. Two of his most famous series depict the violence in Colombia in the 90s and the torture of Iraqi prisoners by American security personnel at Abu Ghraib Detention Center in West Baghdad. In 1908, in the town of Angles, Spain, another surrealist artist, Remedios Varo, was born. In 1917, Baro and her family moved to Madrid, where her father encouraged her to study at the Academy of Fine Arts of San Fernando when she was 15. 
Here she worked alongside great Spanish painters such as Salvador Dali. After her studies, Varro ended up marrying one of her classmates and they ended up moving to Paris for a year. Three years later, Varro separated and ended up making acquaintance with a painter named Esteban Trases, who introduced her to André Breton and his group of surrealist friends. This is where she joined the group Logico Fovista. During her time spent as a member of this group, Varro produced a painting that displayed famous style. This called Table Double Agent. As the Spanish Civil War was approaching in 1938, Varro displayed her piece, He's Late, at the International Surrealism Exposition. Her work really varied. Some of her famous works inclu include The Revelation Watchmaker, Exploration of Source, and The Vegetarian Vampires. She died from a heart attack in 1963. Another artist who whose artistic interest was reinforced by her father was Maria Sol Escobar, born in May 1930, simply known as Marisol. From 1951 to 1954, she took courses at the New School for Social Research under influential mentor Hans Hoffmann. It was 1951 she started looking into her famous paintings, The Blackbird Love, Cocktail Party, Hand Holding Hand, and Father Damien. Marisol was not necessarily a surrealist, however, she was very much so an abstract, abstract expressionist with many of her unique works influencing viewers. Right now, she lives in New York. Julia Diaz is a contemporary artist who was born in El Salvador in 1917 and died in El Salvador in 1999. She was a student of Valera Lecha, who was a Spanish painter that lived in El Salvador. She studied art in Europe after she won a scholarship to do so, but decided to return to El Salvador in 1954. In 1958, she opened up the Galleria Forma, which was the first art gallery in El Salvador that featured art made by different artists from within the country which was later destroyed by an earthquake. In 1982, Diaz and her supporters um, established Fundacion Julia Diaz Ente Dedicado a la Promocion de las Artes. Later, in 1983, she helped open El Museo Forma that featured her art and the art of other important artists within the country. Her early paintings are influenced by her teacher, Le Lecha, and her later paintings are influenced by what she learned in Europe and her own personal taste. Many of her paintings feature the struggles that peasants faced. She also paints a lot of children and a lot of um, paintings that have to do with families. Grumanesa Amoros is a Peruvian-born artist who has had her work featured throughout the world. Her art is usually three-dimensional, but she has also published photographs, paintings, and encaustic artwork. A lot of her art is inspired by Peruvian culture, but not necessarily all of it is. A common theme in Amoros's work is the Oros Islands. The Oros Islands were a series of floating islands located in Lake Titicaca that were made by pre-Incan Oros people. They served as an inspiration for her. Amoros has featured the Oros Islands in pieces in Times Square, Venice, and other places throughout the world. Additionally, she also often makes use of LED cords in her pieces. El Simo is one of her first sculptures that incorporates lights. Some of her inspiration for this piece came from seeing Peruvian vineyards during her childhood. Another notable installation of hers was Fortuna, a temporary piece in Tabla Care, Spain, in a historical building. This piece also used extensive LED cords. It's here, though, is a Mexican surrealist painter born in San Juan de los Lagos, Jalisco. At 14, she was arranged to be married to a senior army officer. By age 17, she had birthed three children and with them moved to New Mexico City. Once in Mexico City, Izquierdo found her passion in art and would spend her time teaching herself art techniques. She left her husband to further pursue her art career and studied at the Escuela Nacional de Bellas Artes, or the Academy of Fine Art in Mexico City. Her main influences were her teachers from the Academy, Rufino Tameo, Manuel Rodrigo Lo Loanzo, and most notably Diego Rivera. Her paintings were mainly of women, animals, or still lifes, and had bright colors and intricate de details. She was not as controversial and political as other artists, but her style was rooted in her indigenous Mexican heritage. Sueño y Presentimiento is a painting capturing a nightmare that she had one night. Many have interpreted that painting as a surrealist expression or as exhibiting her suffering during the final years of her life. 
This was the last of her works due to her paralysis at the age of 46 and her death at 53. She is the first female Mexican artist to have her own work is exhibited by itself in the United States. Her works were displayed in the Art Center in New York City in 1930. Her legacy paved the way for other female Mexican artists. Leonora Carrington was a surrealist artist born in Lancashire, England in 1917. During her childhood days, she was very rebellious and was expelled from two schools, forcing her parents to ship her off to Florence, Italy, where she attended Miss Penrose's Academy of Art. She began her exploration of art here. She met many surrealist artists like Paul Eluard, one of the first surrealist artists. She fell, in, she fell in love with painting. However, her father was not supportive of her choice to pursue such a career. Fortunately, on the other hand, her mother encouraged her and even gave her a book called Surrealism by Herbert Reed, which sparked her passion for surrealism. She met and became infatuated with Max Ernst, a German surrealist painter who was later arrested several times for his controversial work. After their separation, Carrington lived and worked in Mexico and was asked to create a mural which she named El Mundo de los Mayas. It is still on display today in El Museo Nacional Antropología in Mexico City. In one of her most important pieces entitled Self-Portrait, Carrington is sitting in a blue armchair next to a hyena. She is known to use hyenas in her paintings often to symbolize her rebellious and free spirit. A white horse is pictured in the back window, which symbolizes Carrington and her free nature, while a white rocking horse is behind her, which relates to her strict British childhood. The painting incorporates both the idea of restriction and freedom. Not only does she, did she create paintings, but sculptures and books as well. In addition, she was also one of the founders of the Women's Liberation Movement in Mexico in the 1970s. Neo-pop art in Latin America. In the 1950s, pop art was an outlet to venture away from the status quo style of abstract expressionalism. Soon fading by the 1970s, a rebirth of pop art, or neo-pop art, began to emerge. These artists drew inspirations from minimalism, conceptual art, photorealism, installation or performance art, and more. One can think of neo-pop a more extreme version of Warhol or Oldenburg. Speaking of Warhol, internationally renowned pop artist Romero Berto was selected alongside him for Absolute Vodka's Absolute Art Campaign in 1988. Born in Recife, Brazil in 1963, Berto lived an extremely modest lifestyle while growing up amongst eight brothers and sisters. Self-taught at an early age, he painted what he saw and what he imagined on surfaces such as newspapers, cardboard, or any scraps he can find. In 1983, Bertolt traveled to Paris, where he was introduced to the works of Matisse and Picasso. After exhibiting in a few galleries and private shows, Berto was encouraged to travel to the United States, where pop art was flourishing. Berto moved to Miami and set up his studio, open to the public. He combined influences from Cubism with pop art to create an iconic style. The New York Times describes it as exuding warmth, optimism, and love. Cerón's artwork combines pop art elements, cubism, with classic and modern techniques, using pre-Columbian symbols and pre-Hispanic and ancient icons from different cultures. He mixes all these with urban art, creating his own style. Doing this, he creates a unique piece that are multicultural, postmodern, urban, and a mix between classic and modern, rich in symbols and in message. His art has been featured around the world via the World Tour of Art in London, Dubai, Mexico, Madrid, Berlin, Dallas, Texas, and more. Art was used by these artists to criticize the dis decisions of Latin American politics and to convey messages of peace to their people. Through their artwork, they took a stand against militarianism and injustice and torture in Latin America, as well as other parts of the world. Art was not only an expression, but it carried symbolism and a powerful message. Many of the women used their art to make an impact as the first women in the art world, and new contemporary artists in the 20 and 21st century used pop art to express their Latin roots and heritage through the vibrancy and boldness of their work.